Guyana and Suriname sign MOU on Quarantine River Bridge. Domestic assault charge against Anag executive Trump. Exxon made 5.5 billion US dollars last quarter. And what's wrong with civil society? I am Marie Corporal Ford, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. Today is Indian Arrival Day, and it marks the 184th anniversary of the arrival of the HMS Whitby. This ship brought the first 244 immigrants from India to the shores of British Guiana. They were persuaded to come to this land under the guise of fair work and better living conditions as indentured servants, only to be forced into working on the plantation under conditions akin to slavery. But from these humble beginnings, or harsh beginnings rather, they grew to become another integral part of the cultural melting pot that is Guyana. So, happy arrival day, folks. I hope you enjoy it. Construction of the Quarantine River Bridge is expected to begin in the coming months, as representatives from Suriname and Guyana began the feasibility study and design of the bridge. The contract for the feasibility study was awarded to Trinidadian company WSB Caribbean for two million US dollars. Eight construction firms have already been shortlisted to build the proposed bridge. When completed, one could theoretically make a trip from Georgetown to Paramaribo in under six hours. Impressive. Anug executive member 34-year-old Kian Jabour had been charged in February with the assault of his ex-girlfriend, and he has now been released on $20,000 bail after pleading not guilty. Anug announced the withdrawal of the charge by the complainant and said that in light of the development, it was happy to welcome Jabour back to active participation in the party's executive. The party had previously announced that Jabour would be withdrawing from all its activities pending the outcome of the criminal proceedings against him. Isn't it interesting what protection you can get when you're rich and powerful? Anyway, now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale, this is 2016 Toyota Axio. It comes with Bluetooth, mug rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo, fog lamps, electronic parking brake, bar camera, and much, much more. Buy cash for $3.5 million. All paid down as low as $700,000 with around $68,000 monthly for five years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit their showrooms at 171 Peter Roche, Queenstown. A lot to Lama Street and tell them that you for this sweet, sweet deal. One businesswoman is now counting her losses after thieves broke into a supermarket and caught it off with millions of dollars in cash and other valuables. The woman, who wished not to be named, told Sobrook News that the incident occurred sometime between Tuesday night and early yesterday morning at the S. Chetty supermarket located at Tushin Housing Scheme. She explained that she secured the supermarket after closing for business on Tuesday, and upon her return yesterday morning, she discovered items were scattered on the floor. The thieves had reportedly broke through a wall to get into the store. Police are currently investigating the murder of 59-year-old farmer Cedric Jones from the village of Baishazon in the Deep Rupununi. According to the police, Jones was beaten to death by a 27-year-old farmer from the same community on Friday evening. The two men reportedly got into an argument about Jones' animals running into the yard and destroying his crops. The suspects, whose name had not been released by the police as of yet, said Jones started the fight, but he was too drunk at the time to remember how the fight ended. The suspect is currently in police custody and will face murder charges soon. Also in the Rupununi, 21-year-old Mark Opie, 23-year-old John Lee Edmund, and 23-year-old Okemi Jervis are now in police custody after they were discovered with 260 grams of cannabis at Tabatinga Central Rupununi, Letham. Kanu said that a special operation was conducted following reports of students selling narcotics in school. The men are suspected of being the facilitators of the school-aged weed men. Do you own a truck? No, not the Muno disease, I mean a real truck. Like Garth, International, Freightliner, Bedford TM, or Scammell. Then come get high quality truck parts at the lowest prices at Powered Automotive. Visit them at lot 1161 EE Eccles. Or call them on telephone number 6970171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy duty truck parts store in Guyana. The body of 54 year old sport hunter Suresh Dial was discovered in a decomposed state with gunshot wounds at the Mashabo village Bakdam in Region 2, two days after he left for a hunting trip. Dial left for hunting on Thursday last and was expected to return on Monday. Relatives revealed that two persons who usually hunt with Dial contacted them on Monday and informed them that he was short. The relatives ventured to the Bakdam where they found Dial's body. 
The party is now at the city funeral home awaiting a post-mortem examination. Now for today's world update. The possibility exists for Guyana to add a second gas pipeline as Exxon continues to make more and more discoveries offshore. Minister Barat said the government is considering heading this route. He also said they are anticipating the production of 100 million cubic feet of natural gas daily. But with further exploration in the cards, which could lead to the discovery of even more gas, a second pipeline may be needed. Guyana has 16 trillion cubic feet of proven natural gas reserves. Experts agree that this is expected to increase significantly. Now, in other oil news, ExxonMobil on Friday announced estimated first quarter 2022 earnings of US $5.5 billion. A release from ExxonMobil said that first quarter results included an unfavorable identified item of US $3.4 billion due to its planned exit from Russia's Sakhalin 1. First quarter capital and exploration expenditures were US $4.9 billion. Take a look at this beauty being constructed in a gated community called Richmondville in Guyana. It features four bedrooms, one pool with 7,000 square feet of living space along with modern amenities. Contact Sheriff Construction on 592-618-5702. Now for our shoey news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? The state of civil society groups in Ghana. Civil society groups and worker unions are the primary ways an average citizen can directly defend their rights. These two groups are enshrined in the constitution to empower citizens to act collectively against abuse from the government and the private sector. These organizations are given so much reverence in politics that they're even allowed to speak to the United Nations. But in Guyana, most civil society groups are just partisan and ineffective, only commenting whenever their narrow interests are directly affected, or rather the narrow interests of the leaders of said groups are directly affected. And the unions? Well, the union heads are betrayal to the working people of this nation. The same union heads have been in place for years and have done absolutely nothing but to ensure that the workers of this nation will continue to get crumbs while the rich feast. Maybe that's why the union leaders decided to brunch with the president this year instead of marching with the workers on Labor Day in the rain. Anyway, I could go on, but what I'm trying to say is that this country is going to get real scary real fast if people don't stand up and get organized against all that's currently going on. Now for our uncut news, viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Ghana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel at least was. So, you give your answer, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, what topics do you feel the media is not effectively covering? Dopamine actually gave several. They said uncharted topics the media doesn't cover more efficiently. One, how the private sector is allowed to get away with tax evasion, yet everyone wants to build the country. No, that's seriously one of my biggest problems, and you know how difficult it is to try to look into these people's tax information? I mean, come on, you have nowhere online is published just how much money Muhammad even has. I'm just saying. We should be concerned if he's a billionaire, it means that he's literally richer than the nation. Anyway. Two, how are they addressing employment discrimination? That too is also extremely important because discrimination is really one of the major issues affecting this country. Whenever a new government comes in, it's a new set of rules and it seems to be, it, I don't know, it seems to be determined on your hair texture apparently, and your last name and connections. And you're right, religious discrimination is also a huge problem in this country. Three, the public transport system needs an overall ASAP. Yes, before they kill even more people. Four, the coverage of the police force. The police force is basically a den of sin and corruption, and unfortunately, getting information from them is like pulling teeth. It was bad under the last government, and it's even worse under this government. Honestly, the fact that Levoy Big Shits is even friends with everyone in the police force should really tell you about the caliber of his character. And five, what's up with these political parties and their personal charade of having the country's interests at heart when everyone knows full well they are just race pushers? Yes, it's extremely unoriginal and very uninspired. I just wish they would bring us something new because at the end of the day, I don't care what your race is as long as you are making sure that we live in a Guyana that's safe and prosperous. Those are all some really great points that you brought up. And what saddens me is that many of my 
colleagues in the media actually have the time and the resources to be able to follow up on such stories, but they don't. Well, I guess because it does not lie in the financial interests of the advertisers and the people who run the stations. Anyway, that's why it's up to the people to actually stand up, to come together in groups, and to do something about it. Anyway, let me just hop off my soapbox now. So, before we get to tonight's question, you can multiply your cash by selling digital top-up. This is a legit way you can to make some money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a top-up vendor quick and easy by linking with Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685-3109 for more info. Now for tonight's question. Every arrival day, the debate starts to arise if whether we should call it Indian Arrival Day or Arrival Day, and in fact, some are fighting to call it Survival Day. So, I want to know which one do you support and why do you support that name for the day? I want you to think about that question. Tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Pulford saying good night, folks.